Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the Pareto diagram or Pareto chart. It's a type of a chart that contains both bars and line graph. What are bars? Bars, something that looks like this. And lines are lines. So it's going to include those. This is an overall picture. It's a visual tool widely used in quality control and business to represent frequency of occurrence of events. That's basically what we are trying to represent. But the principle behind it, it's based on an important principle that we call the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. What is this 80-20 rule? It's basically state that roughly 80%, 80% of the effect comes from 20% of the causes. What, what's an example for this? For example, 80% of revenue for, a for your company comes from 20% of customers. So only one-fifth of your customers 20%, one-fifth of your customers, they account for four-fifths of your revenue, of 80% of your revenue. And for companies, it's very important to know what is causing, what is causing whatever you are studying in case of revenue, in case of revenue. For example, for a company, for a company, maybe one-fifth of their employees or 20% or, for example, one-fifth or 20% of your salespeople are contributing 80% of your sales. Well, that's important to know because when we want to talk about those. We want to talk to those 20% of salespeople. We want to ask them, what are you doing that you are generating all these sales? We want to learn from you so we can standardize this process. Or for example, 20% of the road will have 80% of the traffic. So the majority of the traffic, the 80% of the traffic is on 20% on, on of the road or 20% of the intersection. So this diagram is a powerful tool because it's a visual tool because it visually display which factor are significantly contributing to the organization or to whatever we are doing, whatever we are studying. So this will help the company prioritize resources where they will be most effective. So if these 20% of, of, of salespeople are contributing 80% of the revenue, let's reward them. Let's give them more training. Let's ask them to help others. And this method, this 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 par this graph is commonly used in various form of analysis, including, for example, policing decision. W what does that mean? Let's assume a a um, a, a city or a police department notices that eighty percent of the crime comes from a particular area, which is twenty percent of the geographical the ge geographical area of the city. Well, if that's the case, then they will devote more police officers, more policing forces to that area. Also, defect prioritization. If we can find out what are the reasons for the defect in our product, then we can focus on that. Sales analysis, same concept. So what we're going to do, we're going to, as CPA candidate, we have to know how to read those graphs. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to build the graph first that, and show you how the graph is built first, actually. Then we will read it. But most likely, all what you have to do is read the graph. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Steps in building the graph. First, you identify the categories. Let's, let's list the categories or causes of the problem you, are, you want to investigate. Then you collect data. Collect data for each category and order the categories from the highest to the lowest based on their frequency of occurrence. And how do you do so? Through a bar graph create a bar graph what's a bar graph well this is what the bar graph would look like and you list though list the causes from the highest to the lowest so the leftmost bar this one here should represent the category with the highest frequency or impact and it goes down from the highest to the lowest then you're going to compute a cumulative percentage line and this cumulative percentage line might look something like this and you're going to see how we compute this line. So calculate the cumulative percentage line of each category and add the cumulative line graph, which is this one here, this line here, that overlay the bar paragraph. 
the first point on the line graph correspond to the top of the first bar and each subsequent point is added to the previous cumulative percentage and you can see how we compute the cumulative percentage then you are going to go ahead and analyze the chart use the chart to determine which categories have the most significant impact this chart will typically show that a small number of categories that's the whole point is responsible small number of categories are responsible for a large percentage of the problem and this is where the 80 20 rule comes into place because this bar shows you that 80 percent of the results are just because of 20 percent of something happening so a small cause is contributing to a large effect i want to know what the what these causes are so i can either fix them or promote them or reward them let's take a look at an example let's assume we are a manufacturing company and we are facing a high return of product and we want to analyze the causes so we collect data for the last quarter and we assume that's a representative of what's going on and we determine that the product defect was resulted in 90 percent return delivery delays 45 returns and satisfactory service 30 returns incorrect product ship 75 and customer order wrong item 60 returns the first thing we do is we list them in an order from the highest to the lowest this is what we did now if we add them we have 300 frequencies 300 events we're going to compute calculate the percentage of each cause next we calculate what percentage each cause is the total number of return okay so we're going to what we're going to do we're going to take the 90 and we said the total are 300 divided by 300 and if we take 90 divided by 300 we will see it is 30 percent now we could com compute the second percentage 75 75 divided by 300 let's find out what that percentage is let me pull my calculator here 75 divided by 300 that's equal to 25 percent now what we do is we take 30 plus 25 that's equal to 55 percent and that's the cumulative average another way to compute this 55 percent is to take 90 plus 75 which is if we take 90 plus 75 equal to 165 divided by 300 that's also 55 percent then we'll take 60 divided by 300 if you want to do it separately 60 divided by 60 divided by 300 that's equal to 20 percent therefore the cumulative is 55 plus 20 percent equal to 75 and you're going to see those cumulative percentages just make a note of this 30 55 75 then we can do the same thing for the 45 45 divided by 300 is 15 percent and the cumulative is 15 plus 75 equal to 90 percent and this is equal to 10 percent by itself and if we add 90 plus 10 that's going to give us 100 always should add up to 100 okay so make a note of the 30 55 75 90 and 100 percent then we're going to calculate the cumulative percentage i just i just did this then we're going to we're going to create the chart we would then create a bar chart with the causes on the x-axis and the number of return on the y-axis and overlay it with a line graph on the cumulative percentage this is what we're looking at this is the x-axis with the causes the y-axis with the number of return and the cumulative percentage is right here the graph of cumulative percentage then remember those individual percentages and the cumulative for example the first one product defect was 30 percent we drop we put a line here eh, not a line a dot then the cumulative effect of the incorrect product is 55 we computed this then the wrong item ordered was an additional 20 percent which is 75 the cumulative then 90 then 100 percent then we draw a line and this is what we're this is what i just showed you this is how we compute compute the graph and this is the graph itself now on the exam you might have to know how to read the graph so this bar graph indicate that the number of product returned due to different causes with product defect this one here being the most common reason so the red line represent the cumulative percentage of the total return accounted by each category now if we add product defect plus incorrect ship product those two together this one and this one represent 55 percent of all returns now if we add the third item we're up to 75 percent now we know that category one two and three those are the categories that we need to focus on those are the three issues that we need to focus on and this aligns back to the Pareto principle 
which would predict that a small number of causes, roughly 20%, are responsible for a large percentage. We could have many other categories, but those three contributed to 75%. Let's take a look at another example or at another graph to just be comfortable reading it. So this is graph already done. So this is Pareto chart of bug report categories. Why are we reporting bugs? Well, crashes, user interface glitches, performance bugs, security flaws, localization issue. This is the number of report and this is the causes. What, what can you see? What can you tell me? Well, if I take crashes plus user interface together, they represent 71.4. So what does that mean? It's the majority of the glitches, the problem, the majority of the bug report is due to crashes and user interface glitches. So this bar graph shows that the number of reports for different bug categories, with crashes being the most reported issue, the red line depicted the cumulative percentage of the total bug report accounted for, accounted for by each category and all previous categories combined. Well, in our case, crashes and user interface re represent 71.4. So we need to focus on these if we're gonna spend time and resources focus on these two issues to improve software stability. So this visual representation helps the company do what? Prioritize the fixes. We're not going to focus on localization issue, just it doesn't represent a large percentage. We're going to focus on crashes and user interface. So this is what the Pareto graph or diagram is trying to show us. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look additional resources, MCQs, especially if you're studying for your CPA, CMA, or some other certification. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.